In this video, I'm going to show you a few techniques of how to prevent Achilles tendon tendonitis while using hiking boots when you're hiking up and down mountains and cliffs and generally using them. In this video, I'm going to share a couple of techniques of how to use your hiking boots properly to prevent tendonitis on your Achilles tendon. And then also at the end of the video, I'm going to share a story of how this impacted me and just how critical this technique is. The first key to preventing injuries to your Achilles tendon causing tendonitis is your actual boot fit. When you put your boot on and you get this thing on here, one of the keys is to make sure that the boot is not too long and not too short because if the boot is too short what will happen is you'll start banging your toes into the end of the boot and it'll start hurting your toes which will cause you to act funny and you'll start tensioning up your calf to try and pull your toes back and that in turn puts a lot more load on your Achilles tendon. So make sure that your boots generally fit in the length because even though that seems like, oh, that's obvious, not really because some people say, oh, it's no big deal. I always like having my boots a little bit snug. When you're hiking, you gotta remember that as you're hiking for hours and hours, your feet will actually swell inside your boots. So when you go purchase your boots at your local outfitter store or wherever you're purchasing them, make sure to try them on late in the afternoon, if at all possible, when your feet have completely swollen up and that'll give you a much better idea. My experience has been that in the morning, my shoes fit a little bit loose, but near the end of the day, as I'm trying to put my boots on after I air them out, it's like, wow, these things are really tight. So that's something to consider to prevent that tendonitis as you're trying to pull your toes back. The next thing is to make sure that your boots have enough support for your feet. Now, in this particular boots, my keen trail hikers, I use super feet in there. Not, uh, I don't use them in every pair of boots, but in my Keens, I find they're a little bit more comfortable. And what that does is the super feet helps add a little bit of arch support to the otherwise cheap foam inserts that come with every boot. I mean, you pay 100, 150, 200 bucks for boots, and yet they just load them with cheap foam inserts. It's really crazy. So if you're starting to have challenges with your both your tendon that runs along the bottom of your foot and your Achilles tendon, make sure to check out Superfeet. A lot of times you can go to these outdoor hiking stores and they'll have a different sample sizes where you can load them into your boots and see if they fit properly. And that can make a big difference for you. The next thing and I'm going to show you, and this is the key factor, is how you tie your boots. Now you wouldn't think, you know, how, how I lace up my boots can be a big deal, but it's actually a critical factor in how to prevent injuries to your Achilles tendon causing tendonitis. So when you put on your boot, one of the key factors is how you lace your boot up. Often when you're just sitting or squatting, you put your foot straight into your boot here and then you just pull your laces tight, bring these things back, crank it around and tie your standard shoelace knot. Now that works all fine and dandy when you have a nice boot, uh, like a stool or a park bench or something to tie your boot. However, the challenge is that when you're camping, often you're actually sitting down and your toe is pointed out. And so when you put your boot on, what you end up doing is you're sitting in your tent you put your boot on here and your toe is pointed out and then you begin lacing up your boot here and tightening it up. The danger is that you've actually created a tensioning system that causes your foot to constantly point slightly outward. So when you raise your calf up to a natural walking position like here, what happens is there's a lot of tension in the laces that cause a lot of tension in your Achilles because when your toe is pointed out and you begin standing up, you can already feel a little bit of tension in your Achilles here. 
but as you move forward and those laces are really tight, that actually causes a lot of tension in your Achilles. So the key to this technique is making sure that when you are, if you're forced to sit in your tent to put on your boots, put on your boots like this, but actually get your hand and pull your boot up so you can get the proper lace position and get the proper lace position in your boots tighten them up like this and then when you stand up there'll be a lot more gap in your boot space here but as you move your foot forward and back or you flex your leg there won't be nearly as much tension on your Achilles here now if you're forced to sit in your tent to tie your boot that is what you got to do is you just got to pull your foot up but if you do have the opportunity to get out of your tent or your home and your car the best way i found to do this is to put your foot in your boot flex your boot back pretty far and now you can tighten the heck out of your laces crank them out and then you're ready to go and now your lace can be really tight but there's virtually no tension on your achilles from your lace system forcing your foot to fight against those laces because as you walk if your laces are too tight up here and you naturally walk through and you push up here what will happen is if your laces are too tight it begins pulling against your Achilles here and that can make for a real painful if not injurious experience and I'll tell you about that what happened to me in one of my polar expeditions. The next technique that I'm going to talk about is actually changing the tensioning on your laces depending on what you're doing. Now this may seem silly for you to actually adjust the lace tensioning on your boot because you're like, oh, I just tie my boots and then I march around. However, if you're going to be doing a, like hours and hours of uphill climbing, climb to a summit, a, a lake or wherever, and then climb back down like I'm working on my uh, or hiking in Jackson Hole guide, and there's a lot of hikes here that just for hours and hours they go straight up but once you reach the location that you want to visit you have your picnic or whatever you hike for several hours down now this next technique it seems a bit silly but it saved me from a lot of injuries once i learned it before i was always oh, like man my calf's hurting my achilles is hurting is like oh and that's why i finally figured it out so what i'm going to show you now is how to actually adjust when you're doing these hikes that are continuously down or continuously up. What you do for this technique again is if you're continuously hiking up for multiple hours and say you got to sit down and you can't uh, you can't get your foot in a good position is if you're hiking uphill for a lot of hours you want to spend extra care and get that toe as high as you can get your foot before you lace your boots down and then again same technique for the achilles prevention of damage now that your toe has been up your your laces are here there's a big pocket where your toe flexes and your foot flexes and you shouldn't feel any tension on your achilles or your shin muscles at all as you flex your boot back and forth because as you hike uphill you're going to constantly do, be doing this which puts a lot of tension on your calf muscle the connective ligaments and your tendon where it attaches to your to your uh, heel bone so as you're walking walking uphill you're constantly doing this sort of motion at best you're level but at worst you're extremely kilted out so any tension on your achilles can be a real problem now the second part of this technique is when you get to the top of the hill and you do your thing the problem is this style of lacing which is great for uphill once you begin facing the other direction and moving downhill this lacing actually causes your foot to be very loose in your boot and as you're stepping down your foot will actually drive into your boot and blacken your toes and cause you to curl up and create more tension on your Achilles and on the tendons on the bottom of your foot. 
So what I do is when I get to my top of my destination and I'm hiking around and then I turn around and know that I've got to be doing hours and hours of this down stepping, down stepping and I, I can already feel that in my boot is I actually loosen my laces and instead of pulling them up like I recommended before in the video, this is the more complex technique, is I actually put my foot slightly toe down, re-tighten my boots, and go with this. And what happens is this changing of the tension of the laces on your boot prevents your foot from sliding forward because the front part of your ankle will catch the tongue and the forward part of your boot and it prevents your toes from what's called toe bang from striking the forward part of your boot and then you can walk down for hours and hours and hours the load is spread over your ankle your shin and the top part of your foot rather than crushing your toes causing you to curl them up and pulling and then which will injure your plantar fasciitis, that tendon that runs with your big toe, and then also you're going to start pulling with your calf to try and prevent that. So that prevents a lot of injury. Now I know it seems a little crazy to have to adjust your laces, but when you do a lot of hiking crazy uphill and then hiking crazy downhill in long spurts, it can actually make a big difference to you. So I actually do that because I know hiking in the Tetons and in Jackson Hole, almost everything here is up. It's pretty crazy. And then after hours and hours of up, you turn around and you go down and you think, oh, I'm tired, I don't wanna do this. Believe me, the 30 seconds that you choose to put your toe ever so slightly down, retention your laces so they're snug, but not too snug, can make all the difference in preventing toe bang and injuring your Achilles and that muscle and uh, ligament and tendon structure on the bottom of your foot, which can lead to plantar fasciitis. Now, if you're on highly variable terrain, I recommend my standard lacing technique of just putting your foot back, cranking the laces. You don't have to go super crazy, because as you go up and down, you want things generally loose. But when I'm going crazy up, actually I prefer to have just a little bit looser lace on my boot, even more pulling back and even loosening the laces more so my foot moves around without lifting up and down. And another point to consider when you're testing out and buying your boots is put your boots on, tension them like I showed you, and then kick a couple of times. Your toe should not strike the front of your boot the first time. Usually it'll touch the front of your boot the second time, and when you kick the third, it'll probably touch the front of the boot. And that's a pretty good fit for your boots. So that toe kick pre can prevent that sliding when you're testing out your boots. If you don't do that, and hey, uh, my boot fits fine, but then you're walking down and your toes go bang, 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 you're gonna have a miserable time and you're gonna wanna throw your $200 boots into the creek and be done with it. So the story I promise about how critical this is to make sure that when you're sitting in your tent, you don't point your toe out and lace up your boots is because on my, one of my polar expeditions in Greenland, I did the exact same thing because I didn't know about this technique and I had my ultra heavy hiking boots on and I was sitting in my tent, it was like minus 20 storming, I'm like oh my gosh. So I'm sitting there and I'm just, I'm tired, I put my toe out and I laced my boots like this and, I, and during the day I was walking on highly variable terrain. I left camp at about 6 a.m. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm going fine. And like and by about 11 a.m., oh man, my, my calves are hurting. By 12, right before lunch, I'm walking and all of a sudden, ah! My tendon was on fire. My Achilles tendon here started just a rapid fire burn that started in my heel and moved up to the lower part of my calf. My leg was literally on fire. And that's because I strained pretty bad, gave myself tendonitis on my Achilles tendon because I tightened my ultra heavy hiking boots improperly with my foot out and my toe way out. 
and I hiked on that and that constant tension and wrenching was like using a wrench and cranking on my Achilles and I spent the rest of the day with a 50 pound pack hobbling along until I figured out oh dude so that point when my Achilles started hurting I loosened my boots crazy loose walked and suffered with that for several hours till the pain dropped down I, I took some insets and just got myself going again but after that moment in my life years and years ago I make sure to always crank up my boot tighten it down and if I'm going even crazy uphill I leave the laces even a little bit looser and that is why you do that so hopefully that story illustrates that I was a hundred miles away from any civilization in Greenland in the Arctic injured because I didn't know how to tie my boots properly for the conditions I was in and imagine if I would partially torn my Achilles tendon and I'm way out there with no communication I probably wouldn't be sitting here right now I hope this video has been helpful to show you how to prevent tendonitis while using hiking boots in your Achilles tendon and also partly in the bottom plantar fasciitis and all that tendon structure in the bottom of your feet. My name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and professional adventurer. Please like and comment on the video and if you found this useful, subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much and enjoy your hiking.